Hi there, this is Java Jim with First Line Equipment, and today in front of us we have the Lalit Bianca. We've had some customers in the past, over the last few years, uh, where they have some steam leak or a vapor leak coming out of the little spout B, uh, right here on the front lower panel. I'm not talking about the discharge tube from the group head, but there is a little uh, spout here that uh, drips into the drip tray. Upon warm up, you will hear some steam vapor come out as the bleeder valve goes into the closed position, which is absolutely normal. Uh, and some customers have been alarmed because in other makes and models, sometimes it doesn't do that. So a lot of customers have been kind of become accustomed to it on the Bianca, but uh, sometimes after say the 30 or 45 minute warm up time, an hour later, there is some steam vapor uh, if the machine's been left on all day, uh, sometimes the drip tray fills up. And today we're going to go over and some of the Bianca's competitive uh, manufacturers are probably saying, whoa, there's a problem with the machine. This is a problem that usually happens in my experience when customers are not softening the water. Uh, I do see it more often or when I mean by softening, it doesn't mean filtering. It means not removing uh, the magnesium and calcium uh, that can build up in, in, the, in the water, uh, especially from a steam boiler that's being at a higher temperature. So softening removes those minerals. Filtering, like your refrigerator filter or other types of filter, typically take out the bad taste, the odor, uh, carbon materials, and then also some other elements that are not good for drinking water. But they typically don't take out magnesium and calcium which affects espresso machine. So what's wa good water for drinking is not necessarily always good for the espresso machine. And as I've repeated over and over again to customers, do not use distilled, purified, RO water, or any type of formulated water that you see on the internet. Uh, because I've just had numerous customers where they have problems with many different types of machines that are overheating. And basically the first question we ask is, what water are you using? Uh, and then we drill down from there, solve the problem, and try to get the customer on the right track. Now, some customers will ask me, well, what's the best water? I don't have an answer because you may use a brand of uh, bottled water, and today that bottled water comes from a spring in Maine. Uh, the next time you get it comes from a spring in, say, Pennsylvania. Which one's better? I don't know. but. Uh, that's why I can't recommend any bottled waters. But today we're going to go over why this spout uh, can leak vapor or some liquid. If the water is flushing, the pump is kicking on, and this spout is flushing a lot of water, it could be two issues. One could be the solenoid valve is blocked for the steam boiler, but more so the water is too pure. Uh, Lalit right now uh, recommends uh, the TDS to be between 80 and 120 ppm parts per million. Uh, if you're under say 50, you're going to be too pure and the water level sensor may not pick up the water in the boiler. Um, and what happens is the machine just goes through the whole tank of water until it empties out. But let's get started. We're going to dive in. Uh, the tools that you're going to need to do this testing to figure out which component is creating the vapor leak. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, which here I have a drill and a, a, a flathead medium size. And this thing is made by, uh, I can't say the company, but we probably had the screwdriver probably about 20 years or 25 years. Uh, on the top here, you'll see an assortment of, of Phillips, little Phillips head screws, uh, and then also one large uh, screw for the water tank. So we popped off the big one, has a spring, and we're now gonna dive into taking these other small screws out. So now we're going to remove these small screws. And as you can see, the body will pop out a little bit, which is normal. That one went flying. Basically, once you have the screws removed, oh, one more.
you're gonna take the Phillips head, not the Phillips head, the flat head, lift up the panel like that, and you're gonna slide it off that little rim cover. Now there is a little uh, washer O-ring in here. Uh, you'll just basically, when you put it back in, you're just gonna lift this up and put the cover back in. It should still stay in place. So, typically when there's a steam vapor leak, it's not coming from this coffee boiler here. Okay, it's coming from the steam boiler. Now, customers will ask why the steam boiler? Steam boiler operates at a much higher temperature. So the buildup can occur much faster on the steam boiler. Now, this is a fairly new machine. Uh, if the machine is overheating, Typically, this double red wire that you see here is the PID sensor. It goes right back into the brain unit here. Uh, I will ask customers uh, to disconnect it on the back end. We'll take, there's another video on how to take the whole body and the tank off. Disconnect it, wind this out. Whenever you're taking out any PID sensor on any espresso machine, you always wanna make sure that the wire is loose and never twisted or turned or bent. The reason is once you twist, turn, or bend this wire enough, the machine will not heat at all, okay? So typically if a steam boiler is not heating, this could be one of the areas. But what happens is if there's any type of buildup on this PID sensor on the inside, it will not read the temperature correctly. Sometimes you'll see it on the LCC where it's bouncing all over the place, but more often than not, it's not reading the correct temperature and the LCC will show the right temperature, but this is not reading the right temperature and usually it is elevated. So the parts in question, as you can see from the warm up, there's a little steam vapor. This is your vacuum breaker valve, also known as a bleeder valve. If you look real close here, it is uh, brass color. If you see any white, black, or green, means you ha had some buildup coming through. And again, that's from the water, not the machine. And here you have your safety valve, which is horizontal. Uh, this, I believe, is set at 3.5 bar, uh, which is higher than any other machine that I know of. Uh, there could be something higher, but that's that one right there. Again, if you see any discoloration inside there, inside, and I know from that angle, I can't see, but if you see any discoloration, this one could be affected. Now, to test where uh, the vapor leak is coming from, uh, and you have to be have the machine on, fully heated, uh, and you will see sometimes the if this had a vapor leak now this is standing still so this is okay but you will see movement of these air bubbles and and vapor and you will see it coming from this side as well if you don't see it then again this is at your own risk uh, but a way to test it is to squeeze okay squeeze the hose for like five to ten seconds and let go and you will hear a puff out of the spout or you will look for movement, okay? So right now there's no vapor leak, there's nothing moving. This side you have to be a little more careful uh, because it's uh, here on the boiler. Wow, look at that, nice and easy to test. And normally you're not gonna get anything out of here so this doesn't, this doesn't have to be that tight, but typically you will just squeeze this. Again, be careful, you could burn yourself. Just squeeze this and see, look for any movement or listen for the puff. Again, hold the five or 10 seconds. So we have our bleeder valve, vacuum breaker valve here. And what's the purpose of this? When the boiler is heating up, it's to remove any vacuum uh, that was there from a previous heat up. And then it'll seal up and you hear that hisp sound and the steam vapor leak uh, will stop. Uh, this is the safety valve in, start, in case it starts going over 3.5 bar, that will open up and basically prevent the boiler from opening up. However, if you have lime scale uh, buildup or corrosion, uh, and also sometimes if the water's a little pure, on a pure side or more pure side, but not enough to uh, refill the boiler, uh, that can cause the same issue from what I've seen. And some people say, well, it's not true. I have shown customers who have come into our place uh, when they, uh, like I said, doesn't happen a lot, but it has happened. I show them the buildup and basically right there, uh, they're like, whoa, I'm using good water. I said, no, the water's not good. Uh, so the other thing here, again, uh, I mentioned don't use purified, distilled, or any RO water. Uh, the reason is when the water comes into the steam boiler, there's the water level probe right here. And this is a, a rod that goes down probably about halfway into the boiler, maybe a third of the way. 
and it sends five volts of electricity, actually on the Bianca's it's one and a half volts, last I checked, and it used to be five, goes through the rod and then goes down and then from the rod it touches the water and goes to the boiler wall. Well, if there's not enough water in it, what happens is um, the water, uh, the pump kicks on, the solenoid valve opens, uh, which is this one right here, and it refills until the water level reaches. Well, if the water's too pure, it just keeps on going and going because the one and a half volts can't get across the water to the boiler wall. So that's how it works uh, in this machine. So if I disconnect and break the one and a half volts, you hear the pump go on. Okay, put that back in, pump shut off. So there's one and a half volts of electricity going through this wire and through the probe and through the water to the boiler wall. And there's uh, basically it goes to ground, uh, last I checked. So uh, that's basically to go over to uh, diagnose if you have a uh, steam uh, vapor leak on the front spigot or spout. Uh, and determine which parts that are needed or and or cleaned. These can be removed. If you do remove them, please cool down the machine, unplug it, remove all the steam out, and uh, this one can be removed from the bottom nut. And then here, um, I'd suggest not moving uh, or disconnecting this uh, thermosiphon tube or the heat exchange tube, uh, but you can remove it from right in here, this part right here. And actually, Looks like they changed it. It used to be three and a half bar. It's now three bar. So uh, with COVID and everything, with supply chain problems, uh, looks like they got three bar now in here. But still plenty of steam power uh, that comes from the wand. I like to make music with the steam. And there you have it. So again, this was to go over to determine what the causes are of a steam vapor leak from the little spout or spigot on the lower front wall. And from there, you could determine one, okay, is the water adequate or not adequate? And number two, which parts need to be cleaned and or replaced? Thank you for watching. This is Jim with First Line Equipment. Any questions? comments, put them down below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and have a fantastic day.